Strength for the weary. Strength for the weary. I want you to open your Bibles with me to Isaiah 40. If you don't have your Bibles, it's all good. It's gonna come up uh, on the screens for you and you can follow along. And I'm reading from the NIV. And in Isaiah 40, just a little bit of a backdrop, Isaiah has just kind of announced as in, in chapter 39, he kind of concludes with a warning to, to the Israelites, to the people of God that it was to be in the future, be captured by the Babylonians. And so I love Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, I've been really into it. Pastor Brian has been preaching from Isaiah 55 and I've really been just looking at it these past few weeks and love it that it's kind of a book of warnings, but a book of comfort. It's a book where Isaiah the prophet lets everyone know what's about to happen, the near future of what's going on, but he also reminds us of who God is and the strength of who God is. And so we pick it up from Isaiah 40, verse 28. It says this, I love it, it poses a question. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the Creator of the heavens and the earth. He will not grow tired or weary and His understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and He increases the power of the weak. Even youths, come on, where's the youth at? Come on, all the young people, let me know in the chats that you're there. Even youth grow weary, the youths grow weary. But those whose hope is in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on eagles or wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Strength for the weary. I don't know about you, but this may be a silly question up front, but do you get tired? I mean, parents, you kind of know what I'm talking about. Parents, guardians of young bubs, young children. It's like you and I, we live in this state of perpetual, constant tiredness and weariness, right? But you know, do you get tired? And you might be there right now and you're like, no, I don't get tired at all. But I can see you trying to hide your yawn. I mean, I love preaching in church sometimes and you know, you look out sometimes and someone's just trying to hold their yawn off. You know, they're like, it's like, Bro, just yawn, it's all good. I can see you trying to hold in that yawn. I don't know what it is, but do you get tired? Do you get weary? See, I'm a danger to myself and everyone else when I'm tired. When I'm weary, I'm not a great person to communicate with. Uh, I don't think straight, I don't see straight. Uh, I've done some silly things as a result of being weary, tired, exhausted. Don't have all the time to tell you all the stories, but just to name some, I remember one time being on a 14 hour plane ride, going to the bathroom, coming back to what I thought was my seat, only to figure out after waking up Laura that it wasn't my seat, it wasn't my row, nor was it Laura, my wife. It was a completely random person stumbling around in the middle of the night. I was wondering where my seat was only to land in the wrong row. I remember summer camp week many years ago, being so tired, weary. Summer camp's a big week in our youth ministry and we love it and I look forward to the day when we can have summer camps again as we know it. But this one week we were there and we were praying, it was ministry time and I was a bit wearisome towards the end of the week. And I remember praying for who I thought was a man of God, only to figure out as I was praying that this was no man of God that I was praying for. Weariness does some silly things, people. Most recent thing is uh, last night, I had a moment of vulnerability. I had a moment where I was tired, weary, thinking about today, thinking about bringing the message. I thought I would give myself a COVID haircut. Now you're probably wondering already, judging me, why is Togsy wearing a beanie as he's bringing the Word of God? This man is not spiritual at all. No, this beanie is for you to not distract you from what lies beneath. It covers a multitude of sins because in a moment of tiredness and weariness last night, I cut my hair and made a few mistakes along the way. We get tired, right? I think it's part of being human. It's part of the human condition in that all of us, we get tired, we get weary, we get exhausted sometimes. It's indicative of being a human, but more than circles under our eyes or the 2 p.m. caffeine crashes, I think weariness goes beyond the physical. Tiredness goes beyond the physical. Sometimes it can point to significant things going on in our lives. But often our weariness results from the cumulative, uh, multi-layered intersections of life's complexities, be it physical or 
emotional or things going on. It's interesting that even in this pandemic and COVID-19 and the chaos of COVID, where you and I are forced to quarantine in our homes, forced to slow down, stop moving, strip back schedules, not many places to be, not many people to meet. It's funny that we still find ourselves exhausted, still find ourselves in a place of unrest, even though our schedules have been pulled back, which makes me think it's not so much about physical, but maybe spiritually, internally, something could be going on. Online fatigue is a real thing. Driver fatigue is a real thing. Tragically, lives lost every year due to driver fatigue. Perhaps the amplified noise and heartbreak round and about us and the uncertainties of these times, they bring some wear and tear and some weariness into our lives. And maybe I'm talking to people right now and you find yourself generally fatigued, maybe physically, but maybe you feel tired, weary. It's kind of like if I was to hold this bottle of water right now, holding it for five minutes is quite easy. Hold it for an hour, maybe I'll start to feel some aches and pains, but for holding it for a few hours, long enough, you'll start to feel the wear and tear and the aches and pains. What started off as easy, then soon becomes, soon it does become heavy and burdensome and it begins to bring aches and pains. I think about it with our lives, what started off as passionate, what started off as the honeymoon period, what started off as amazing and zealous, you were zealous for the things of God. And as years go on, things soon just begin to turn into a chore and a task and a religious duty. This is what happens with our life. In fact, the Apostle Paul kind of teaches us this, teaches us in Galatians 6 verse 9, he talks about, let us not become weary or another word he uses, let us not grow weary. It's interesting that the Apostle Paul uses the word grow. Maybe it means that we don't just wake up tired, spiritually tired. We don't just wake up spiritually weary, but perhaps it's a slow burn. Perhaps it slowly happens day by day, year by year, we grow weary. If you look at these words in its original language, the words grow weary gives this picture of giving in to evil, giving in to something evil or bad. So what the Apostle Paul was saying is, he was saying, don't give in to the evil or bad circumstances happening around you. Instead, understand this Galatians 6 verse 9, he says, let us not grow weary in doing good, but at the proper time, we will reap a harvest. See, if you just keep standing your ground, if you keep staying in the fight, if you keep just hanging in there, I believe that you can see a due harvest in your life. You can see things break through, but sometimes tiredness and weariness, it gets the best of us, right? I mean, I just watched the Olympics. You and I just watched the Olympics. We're continuing to watch the Paralympics on right now. And to see people who have trained all their life in endurance and in their fitness and in their various sports, but to see some of the best athletes fall prey to fatigue and conk out along the marathon or the journey makes, us think that, makes me think that none of us are void of wearisome. What do you do when this begins to creep into your spiritual life? When well, you've been following Jesus for decades, and you've been in a tough season for longer than you expected when you're in this tunnel of a pandemic and it just seems there's no light ahead. When you can't see the light ahead or maybe what about this, when you begin to show up, yet you're still missing. When you're there, but you're not really there. You begin to, as the Apostle Paul puts it, grow weary. You grow tired in your ability to dream. You grow tired in your worship. You grow tired in your joy and in your generosity and your attendance and in your involvement and in your servitude. The truth is it's not always an easy fix, is it? Weariness isn't relieved by simplistic platitudes of just cheer up, bro. WTF, bro. Where's the faith, man? 
Like it doesn't always come by, come on, be strong. Like someone grabbing your face and going, just, just be strong, Togsy. Just, you're gonna push through. I mean, encouragement is great. Keep helping me when I'm tired. Keep helping me when I'm wearisome. But sometimes it doesn't come about by getting out of it, by just doing more, striving for more, trying more, only to fall short of striving, only to fall short of where we wanna be in our life, which only just proves to be exhausting. No, 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 no. You see, can I just set some people free here for a moment? Just because you're weak, it doesn't make you, or just because you're weary, it doesn't make you weak. I'll say that again, just because you're weary, it doesn't make you weak, it makes you human. Matthew 11, famous words of Jesus. He says, you tired and you weary, come to me and I'll give you rest. The people of God in this time, Jesus was speaking to this predominantly Jewish audience and they were under the, 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 the jurisdiction, if you like, of they were under the systems and the processes and the traditions of what the religious leaders put on them that was heavy and burdensome and they were basically approving their way or proving their way into the presence of God. They were basically performing their way to some sort of approval by God. But Jesus says, and I love how Eugene Peterson puts it in the message. He says, are you tired? Jesus words, are you tired? Are you worn out? I love what Jesus says because Jesus is the fulfilment of everything they were trying to achieve. They were trying to uphold the Old Testament law and they were trying to do so many different things, traditions and ordinances and processes, trying to receive the approval of God. But Jesus turns up on the scene and He says, everything that you've been performing, everything that you've been doing, everything that you've been trying to find approval of is found in Me. I'll read it to you in Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30. Jesus says this, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I love that. You will find rest for your souls. That word rest means to be refreshed. You will find renewal. See, what happened is the people of God got so caught up in the doing that they forgot to be with God. But now Jesus, fully man and fully God, stood before for them and said, hey, are you done with all you're doing? Because all you're doing is now, uh, it's just, it's causing you to be burdensome, causing you to be weary. Throw it all on me because everything you've been looking for is found in me. Perhaps there's people right now in the chats, those who are viewing with us right now online, maybe you find yourself wearisome, burdensome because you've been trying to outwork and get out of this place of being tired and wearisome. Maybe you need to get out of that place of doing and simply be in the presence of Jesus. I love that Jad's been leading us live here in this service. I love it because all you need to do is simply just be in the presence of Jesus. Maybe sometimes it's not about doing so much, but you can just simply be and rest and refresh and renew yourself in His presence. Get away with Jesus. Renew, refresh yourself believe that God's speaking to people right now who are tired, exhausted from this past season. When is it going to end? And I tell you what, regardless of the circumstances that happen round and about us, more than us getting caught up in the doing of doing everything we can to get out of this season, may we be the people of God that choose to just simply be with Jesus, throwing our cares on Him. I love that we opened up with Isaiah 40. You still there, church? Let me know in the chats, I'm still here. Because we're gonna look at Isaiah 40 and I wanna break it down for you. We're gonna make some observations that we can apply to our lives based off Isaiah 40. I love it because it talks about strength for the weary. Here's the first observation I wanna make and you can write this in the chat or you can write it in your notebook. But one thing that Isaiah teaches us here is this. It is a revelation that God, that it is God who gives us strength. Look at this, Isaiah 40 verse 29. He gives strength to the weary and He increases the power of the weak. See, we live in a culture, right? That is so obsessed 
with strength, right? I mean, you hear it in kids all the time. My daddy is stronger than your daddy. No, my daddy is stronger than your daddy. No, my daddy is stronger than your daddy. I mean, you hear it in kids, which then progresses to, I'm stronger than you. No, I'm stronger than you. No, I'm stronger than you. Then it progresses to, I've got more finance and money than you. Well, I've got a better job than you. Well, I've got a better wife than you. I just threw that one in there. I'm sorry, please don't be offended. I've got a corner office. I've got more likes and followers than you. I'm more popular than you. And we are so obsessed with strength. We're obsessed with strength because we think in our culture, in Western culture, strength is based off our performance, how we're doing. Strength is all about walking into that boardroom and showing them who you are and standing up and showing your strength. Yeah, yeah, you go in there, you let them know who you are. You puff your chest out and you let them know who you are. You're a man of strength. You're a woman of strength. We are so obsessed with strength. Strength's not a bad thing. It's just, where do you get your strength from? Some of us, we get our strength from ourselves and our own performance. What happens if you start underperforming, then what? What happens when you're not really hitting your KPIs anymore? What happens when you're not really hitting your dreams and your vision? Because all of your strength is caught up in that dream or that goal. You see, I wanna set some people free through the gospel of Jesus. Let me tell you, as believers, our strength does not come from our own doing. It doesn't come from our own performance. No, our strength, as Isaiah 40 says, it comes from the Lord. Our strength comes from Him. He gives us the strength. To the strength to get through this pandemic. He gives us the strength to lead our kids. He gives us the strength to be married and to live in relationship with others. He gives us the strength as a church to keep moving forward into the best days ahead. I don't know about you. Have you ever had a Wi-Fi signal strength problems? The other day, this happened to me. I'm the guy in the house. Apparently that has to fix it all the time. The kids run to me, Dad, the Wi-Fi, it's not working. And so I go over and I make it sound complicated. Like with kids, we've got to cut the red wire and we've got to cut the blue wire. And they think this is rocket science, but literally I just turn it off for 10 seconds. Wait, turn it back on, but uh, it works. But what I know about signal strength, Wi-Fi signal strength. Now I admit that I am no um, tech savvy dude, but what I do know, the Wi-Fi signal strength is dependent on the proximity of that device. So it is when it comes to our strength, it is dependent on the proximity we have in the presence of Jesus. And when you step outside of that, you'll find that you'll do things in your own strength. You'll find that you'll start to do things in your own strength and your own weakness and in your own performance. But when you step into God's will for your life, when you step into what He says, as Jesus says in Matthew 7, 24, if any man hears my voice and puts it into practice, he is like a wise man who built his house on a rock that when the wind and the waves came, that house stood. Unlike the man who built his house on sand, that when the wind and waves came, that house was crumbled, gone, kaput. You see, let us find our strength in who God is. Let us find our strength in who He is. Psalm 121 says this, I lift my eyes to the mountain. Where does my help come from? It comes from the Lord. Second thing I want to write down is this. It is a confidence that when I am weak, He is strong. I love watching my kids struggle with something. And I'm like, I can help you with that. But in their stubbornness, they're like, no, 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 no. I wanna do this by myself. How much do we do that with God? We, we get so caught up in our things that we wanna do, be it our businesses and our marriage. And God's like, I can help you with that. But it's like, no, 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 I've got this one, God, right? And sometimes we do this so much, but you see, because we live in this culture where we're so caught up in our own strength, we're caught up in our own performance. We think that we can live this life without God. But I gotta tell you right now, I love what the Apostle Paul says to the Corinthian church. He says this, therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. 
Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But He said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, I will boast more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest in me. That's why it is for Christ's sake, I delight in my weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. What's that saying? When you come to the end of yourself, that is where God begins His best work. We get so caught up in our own doing. We get so caught up in trying to perform our way out of our tiredness and in our weariness. I'm gonna do this better. I'm gonna make this plan and I'm gonna hit these visions and hit these goals. While that is all good, let me just set you free right now and help someone out. You cannot do it on your own. It is where God turns up in our weaknesses that you can see the strength of who He is. And sometimes we get caught up on working on our strength, working on our weakness. Can I just say, boast in your weakness because that is where God will turn up in your lack and in your burden and in your underperformance. God turns up and He says, are you done yet? Let me take the wheel. The problem is what I do to God sometimes is I'm the classic backseat driver. I renew my license every year to be a backseat driver. Because backseat drivers, you say, oh yeah, you you jump in the car, you can drive, but I'm gonna tell you what to do. We do this with God. God, take the wheel, but I'm gonna tell you where to go. No, no, no. God's saying, "Can, can I take over now? Can I outwork my will in your life? See, we gotta let go and simply let God happen in our lives. You see, It's a confidence that when I'm weak, it is then I am strong. Last thing's this. And I think Jad's there, he's gonna help us. And we're gonna have just a moment of prayer. And we've got a few pastors on standby who are gonna begin to pray for each and every one of us joining tonight. But I want you to write this down. The last observation I wanna make is this. It is an expectation that Jesus turns up in our weariness. Look at this in Isaiah 40 verse 31 but those whose hope is in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. I love that picture of eagles. Did a bit of research via Google. Some characteristics of uh, eagles. And one of the things that really stood out to me is when the storms and the winds come, Eagles kind of get excited when all the other birds of the skies are kind of scurrying to shelter and kind of hiding out. The eagle gets ready to spread its wings because the eagle uses the wind and the storm to cause it to fly and soar above the storm. And I love that Isaiah likens it to soaring on eagles because where there are winds and where there are waves and where there are storms, I pray as the people of God, we kind of go, you know what? This is an opportunity to soar above the clouds. Why? Because our strength comes from God alone. I am made strong because I am weak and He turns up when I'm at the end of myself. You see, it's an expectation that Jesus turns up in our weariness. Many years ago, Laura and I, we were in New York for one of the first times ever. We were in New York and we were travelling on the subway. We had an eight-week-old, Willow at the time. And as we were going on this train ride, we, were, uh, we, we kind of found ourselves lost. We were on this train, we missed a few stops. And then by then you could tell that the communities we're going through were, were really beginning to change. And we found ourselves, if I'm honest with you back then, being a younger guy, young dad, young husband, I was kind of like, okay, this is, this is not looking good for us. Well, I got to tell you, this stranger out of completely nowhere turned up when we were at the end of the, ourselves. Laura and I, honestly, we think that possibly it was an angel, but that's a story for another day. But this stranger in New York turned up and let us out, then simply just disappeared. We looked, he was gone. And he just said, follow me, come this way, put us on the right track, the right train, when we found ourselves where we needed to be. Do you know that's what Jesus does? When you're at the end of yourself, when you feel like you can't go on anymore, when you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, guess what? Jesus, He is that light in the tunnel. Have you ever noticed 
Throughout the Gospels, Jesus turns up when the disciples, in particular Peter, is at the end of himself. I mean, one of the first times Jesus turns up is when Peter's out all day fishing, hasn't caught anything. Then one of the last times is Jesus turns up and He calls out and He asks Peter a question. Have you caught anything yet? Let me just set it up for you in John 21. You can read this, verses three to eight. Jesus has done three years of powerful, world-changing, impacting ministry. He's died on the cross. He's completed it for each and every one of us. The disciples at the time, they were freaking out, kind of going, well, the dream is over. They kind of got together and they decided, what are we gonna do? Jesus is dead, the dream is over. He was meant to be the Messiah. Peter's discouraged, disappointed, because by now Peter's denied Jesus. Disappointment and discouragement. He says, you know what? I'm gonna go back to what I know. I'm going back fishing. The disciples kind of looked around and were like, hey, we'll go with you. So they head back and they go fishing. I like that John draws our attention to this, that it was early in the morning. It was early in the morning. And he also lets us know that they had been out all night and they had caught nothing. So three things, it was early, they were too tired, it was too early. And you know what? Jesus calls out from the shore and they didn't recognise it was Jesus because He was too far. Maybe you feel like that. You feel too tired, too tired to drink, too tired to see what's ahead for your life. Can I just say Jesus calls out to you? And notice what, jo- what, what Peter does. He, say, he recognises it is the Lord and he jumps into the water and he swims towards Jesus. Can I just say when you are tired, when you're wearisome, when you can't dream anymore, when you feel like you've lost your vision, when you don't see there's a way out, can I just encourage you right now is swim towards Jesus, do everything you can to be in His presence because it is in His presence that you will find rest. It is in His presence that you will find refreshment and renewal. It is where you will find your strength. If we wanna soar like eagles, then we need to find ourselves in the presence of Jesus and it is there we see Jesus refresh and renew Peter. What does he do? He cooks him breakfast and he begins to initiate a conversation where Peter one day would change the world. Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. So beautiful. Strength for the weary is found in the person of Jesus. I'm gonna ask Jad in a moment, just as we still got a few things to do, but just as we draw towards a conclusion here, I really wanna pray for people because I really feel people here, you're exhausted, you're tired spiritually. Even before COVID-19, some of you, you're at the end of yourself. And this is what I wanna do. As Jad begins to lead us, just in a moment of worship, in the chat here, I want you, if you know that's you, I I want you to write something in the chat like this, something along along the lines of, I need strength. Put it in big capitals, put it in lower caps, doesn't matter. But right there, I want you to put in the chat, I need strength. In other words, you're saying, hey, right now I'm just tired. Hey, it's all good. We all get tired, we all get exhausted but God will give you the strength in His presence is where you will find strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. If that's you, I want you to write in the chat. Jad, right now, I want you just to lead us as people just begin to respond right now and and, and put strength into their souls and refresh them and renew them. So Father, right now, Lord, as we worship You, God, I thank You in Jesus' Name. Lord, we throw our cares on You. Lord, we're exhausted. Some of us exhausted, we're tired, but right now we find our strength in You, in Jesus' Name. Come on, let's worship together. You are my inheritance. You are my strength and shield and I confident. You go before me. You're my deliverer. I know I'll never Never been a bad. You are my inheritance. You are my strength and shield, and I am confident. You go before me. You're my deliverer. I know I never, but every man, 
every minute you have always been there Cause you are faithful and you always will be Every triumph, every failure you are loyal to me You are faithful and you always will be Amen, amen. Stay in this atmosphere of worship with us. I've got some of our pastors uh, who are gonna pray for us. And I can see here, Brian Campos, our Maryland's uh, campus pastor. Hey, Brian, people are responding, no doubt in the chats right now. I want you to specifically pray for strength for the weary. People right now who are just weary, tired, so maybe it is this pandemic, maybe it is real things, financial uh, stress going on, maybe relational things going on. I want you to pray a prayer of faith right now, Brian, for people who need strength right now, who are tired and weary. Come on. Amen. Church, why don't we pray together? Father, thank You for your strength, Father. Thank you because we can find strength within you, Father, that you are the one that gives us strength, Father. Whatever is going, coming our way, Lord Jesus, whatever is putting us down, Father, whatever is making us feel weary, I pray in this moment, Father, that we will be filled with your strength, Father, that we will be filled with purpose, Father, with vision, with faith, Father, in this season when fear is shouting at us and fear is weighing us down, Father, and fear feels heavy, Father, I pray that we will choose faith, that we will choose to be the type of people, Father, that go after you. That we will choose to be the type of people that put you first. That we will be the type of people that are full of strength, Lord Jesus. As the word says, Father, you give strength to the weary, Lord Jesus. And we're asking for that today. We're asking, Father, for those people right now as they're listening to my voice. I speak and I prophesy supernatural strength. I prophesy they will be able to stand up with purpose and vision, knowing that the best is truly yet to come. I pray, Father, whatever they ask for father you will be able to promise that you'll be able to come through father i pray that you come through in every single one of the situations father and strength will be our portion in jesus mighty name we pray amen Amen, amen, amen. I see April Miller, our city campus pastor, one of our city campus pastors. Uh, April, we love you and Nathan and everything that you contribute to the vision of our church. But April, I really want you to pray. I pray, you know, I talked about people here who have lost vision. They've lost dreams. They've, they've, they've basically, they're, you know, they're uninspired, they're unmotivated because that's what being tired does. We're weary. And I want you right now to just pray for a renewal and refreshment in people's dreams again. Where people have stopped dreaming, it's time to dream again. It's time to have vision again. And yes, even though the circumstances around and about us might not change, what does not change is who God is. He can bring breakthrough. He's a God who gives visions and dreams. So come on, April, I want you to pray to that end. Believe for people to dream again. Amen. Father, we thank You for this Word, a needed Word for many. And Father, we pray right now that dreams, that vision, that the future that You have installed for every single person, every family, every single person, over every business, over every child, I thank You that You are depositing a seed of greatness on the inside of all of us. And I pray today that, uh, that Your joy the joy of the Lord would be our strength. And I pray that as we step in, maybe over the difficult situations and into where you are taking us, God, that you will give us a new joy, a joy for the future, a joy for what is to come in Jesus' Name. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful. And we got Joel Phoebes here as well, one of our Melbourne pastors. Look at that stallion of a face there. Wow, look at him. Just, wow. You're amazing, bro. We love you. But Joel, uh, it's actually, April just reminded me about this. I want you to really pray for joy right now where people have, you know, they, they've gotten weary, tired, fatigued. I want you to really pray for a sense of joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. That's the promise we hold on to. But I want you to pray right now for people in the chats, those joining us online. Come on, just pray joy into people's lives that they would not lose their sense of joy for who God is. Come on. Absolutely. I love that Jesus said, I've told you these things that 
right joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. So Jesus, right now we thank you that you are a God of joy, a God of peace, a God of hope, a God of comfort, God. So Father, I pray right now that joy would rise up in our homes. Well, wherever people are right now in their cars, walking through a park, wherever, God, Father, I thank you that you would just flood them with your presence, with your strength, with your perspective, Lord God, that as April said, the joy of the Lord would be our strength, God, and that this week in our workplace, on our Zooms, uh, amongst our neighbours, that joy would be our portion, God, that, that people would see you through our joy, that we would just be drawing from that well of your presence, God, of, of your word, of, of worship, God, and that joy would overflow, God, and it would impact those around us, Father. So, God, I just pray right now, every life, every person, they would know they are seen, they are heard, God, and they would feel your presence in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, Chad. One more time. Would you begin to lead us? Come on, church, wherever you are. Come on. Would you stretch your hands out heavenward right now? Come on. Let's believe that God is going to begin to refresh, renew us as we find our strength in Him. Come on, Chad. One more time, church. Sing together. Every hour, every minute, you have always been there. You are faithful and you always will be. Well, every triumph, every failure, you are loyal to me. You are faithful and you always will be. Yeah. Every hour, every minute, you have always been there. You are faithful and you always will be For every triumph every failure you are loyal to me you are faithful and you always will be you are faithful and you always will be before I just hand it back to Cass and the team let me remind you one more time from Isaiah 40 do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the Creator of the heavens and the earth. He will not grow weary. And His understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those whose hope is in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like, we they will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Hey, before I hand it back to the team, we wanna pray one more prayer. It's a prayer of forgiveness. It's a prayer of hope. It's a prayer of coming into relationship with Jesus. Have you made a decision to follow Jesus? I'm not asking you, do you attend church? I'm not asking you, do you do the things that Christians do? No, no, I'm asking you, do you have a relationship with Jesus? He loves you so much. And today is the day of salvation where you ask Him to come and be Lord and Saviour of your life. Maybe you prayed a similar prayer like this a long time ago, but you know in your heart you've drifted, you've gotten distracted, you've made choices that have pulled you away from God. But you know what? The good thing about God, He doesn't walk away. He doesn't walk away from you when you start to drift or get distracted. You know what? He is there in your time of need. He's there when you are weary. And all you need to do today is just simply turn back towards Him and go, God, I need You. I need You in my life. In a moment, I'm gonna pray a prayer. If you're saying, yeah, Peter, would you lead me in this prayer of asking Jesus into my life? Then I want you to say this prayer, wherever you're at, from the bottom of your heart, Friend, He forgives you, He loves you, He died for you. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. And even when you've got to the end of yourself, that's where He turns up and He can bring healing and restoration and He can rebuild something beautiful in your life. So if that's you, you're saying, yeah, I need to know Jesus as my Lord and Saviour. I want you to say this prayer after me. Say this, dear Jesus, come on. Dear Jesus, today I give you my life. I choose you as my Lord and Saviour. Help me. Forgive me, lead me and guide me. I surrender all. I wanna follow you. In Jesus' Name, Amen, Amen, Amen.